Hello and welcome to Nikon Report, your weekly roundup of all the latest Nikon news and all other photographic announcements that we found interesting. It's Constantine here. This is Becky. Yay, number 31 this week. And we have Who Z9 rumors galore. That's right. We are rife with rumors. In fact, uh, Twitter is rife with rumors, I should say. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, earlier today, well, earlier last week, actually, um, Photo Larry posted two pictures of Nikon Z9 camera that were later deleted, but obviously, you know, it spread it all over the internet <laughs> like a virus. The internet um, whole has an eternal memory. Do you know what I mean? It's like it never forgets, like an That's elephant. That's true. <laughs> What's called the effect of Barbara Streisand? <laughs> the Barbara Streisand effect. That's the one. Is it? Is that what it's called? I think so. Yeah, when you do something, it just spreads. Right. You know, just for the sake of it. Anyway, two pictures of the back of Z9 came out and then couple of days later, there were two more pictures. So mm. shall we just go through them and have a look what the camera looks like? I don't know if this is what the final camera will look like, but anyway. Well, you never know. It's obviously pre-production, but it's highly likely that it's 99% um, finished. So at the back of the camera, mm. we have a built-in grip. Yeah. Now, the main difference between this and D6 camera, normally on D6, you would have a little electronic screen just above those buttons on the grid. That's right. We don't have this anymore. No, um, it does look a little bit shorter, mm -hmm. I would say, in frame. Obviously, we've got that known boxy looking prism shape at That's the top true. where the EVF goes. This also, I notice, has a circular eyepiece rather mm -hmm. than the rectangular. And nice, probably it could be a, one of those DK17 type eye pieces. Mm, and it would be good if it was DK17 because then it would be easy to replace. But it's probably a new part. Um, that will be out of stock for years. <laughs> for years and years. Um, then I can see that we've got our extra um, toggle on the mm -hmm. back. It's kind of like a mini multi-selector or sub-multi-selector on That's the back. That's true. Good for moving the focusing points. Yeah, very much so. And probably a bit more ergonomic than the OK and the and the actual multi-selector, which is a bit further down. Mm -hmm. um, so better if you've got your eye to the viewfinder, I'd say, for moving focus points around to have that little extra toggle. There's also another one for the vertical shutter That's button. That's true. Isn't there? And you can see evidence of a back button for the vertical grip as well and also a back command dial. So... That's what I would like on my cameras, personally. Mm. And then one thing I've noticed as well, in line with that cameras, they move the playback button from yes. the kind of top left corner to the kind of right bottom corner. So confusing. <laughs> yeah. So, but if you look at Z6 and Z9, that's fine because you got play, you know, zoom in and zoom out button as well as playback there. Yeah. But because the camera's so big, the first thing I've noticed, yeah, where's the playback button and why function four button is there now? Yes, exactly. So there seems to be a lot of function buttons going on as well. Mm -hmm. um, at least four, based mm -hmm. on the number that we can see on the back. Um, I can also see that multi, uh, sorry, that mode selector dial that we've got at the top, you know, which allows you to choose between CHCL, mm -hmm. etc. That's something that's been missing from all the other Z cameras. That's true. And I quite like its reintroduction there because mm -hmm. it frees up some space on the back. You know, I like buttons. <laughs> I don't like to go into the menus. No. You know, I like my buttons and I like them to be tactile. That's as simple as that. Going to the menus confuses me, and especially when <laughs> you... Well, if you think about it, those cameras have been used at Olympics. Mm. Sometimes it's a matter of fractions of seconds yeah. to make sure that your camera is ready to take the shot. If you look at Usain Bolt running 100 meters, yeah. you want to make sure your camera is ready. And if you're on a single shot, you want to switch really quickly. Exactly. And then going, oh, uh, I need to go to that mode and then I need to twiddle the back dial so that I'm in CH extended or whatever. Yeah, it's a mm -hmm. slow process. So um, adding that back to the top dial is very much in line with flagship bodies. And I do like to see that there. That's right. And we've got obviously a quality and white balance buttons. Mm. We've got our microphone buttons. So to record the memos. Voice uh, memos. Yay. yay. I mean, we have them now on Z6, right? So, But it's uh, designed slightly different way. This one is actually you press the button and you talk to your camera. Yes. As we all do, aren't we? <laughs> Absolutely. Some people say, I'm not a cat person, I'm a camera person. <laughs> um, now, Imagine a house of me and all those cameras all around All those me. cameras, no cats, just cameras. And no food. <laughs> no food at all because you can't eat because film is so expensive. Just memory cards uh, and batteries. That's right. Um, I'd like to also point out that there is an extra eye button. Mm -hmm. which I also think is quite an interesting one. Do you ever access your eye menu when you've got your eye to the viewfinder? No. No, me neither. So it's a weird choice to put an extra eye button It there. is, it is. 
Um, anyway, but as we say, it's prototype, so probably in, there will be a yeah, few changes. They'll just erase it and I'll just uh, draw some other item. It'll be it. function five. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the interesting bit as well, just on the looking at the camera, it looks like that LCD at the back, it's kind of taped up. So I assume it will be an articulated screen, but in this iteration of the camera, it's just taped up. So maybe the hinge mechanism is not fully developed yet. Either or that or the photographer didn't want the screen flopping about and decided to put some duct tape no, on the back. Because a lot of people just grab their screen and just take their camera like this. Yeah, they can. You know? <laughs> I remember Nick, Nick and Rap demonstrated. Look, look, I've got D850 with 24 to 72 8 attached. Look what I can do. I like, well done to you. <laughs> just, I mean, that's your camera. You do you. But He's no still. longer with me, I think. <laughs> but you can see the space up there for the hinge to pull out the screen. So it will have some kind of articulated screen. That's true. And just looking at the top of the camera, the prism is actually quite small. Yeah. Which is, I guess, is a good thing. So that gives us an idea that the camera is actually smaller. The um, little LCD on top looks about the same size as on Z6, Z7, isn't it? Yeah. What I don't understand is, obviously, they've got a sticker mm -hmm. on the on the right hand side here. But normally there's stuff there. So that's what's, true. what's I, all that space for? I think the sticker says two in circle. So it could be that there's a camera number two. I don't know how many yeah. prototypes they have there. Yeah. But generally, yes, you normally have a stuff in there. So it's obviously not there. But um, just above the sticker, you can see there's a little button, pr you know, kind of it's kind of mm. in there. So it's not kind of protruding, but it's actually kind of in there. Mm. I wonder if it's like, you know, when you have to reset the modem and you just stick the pen in there? <laughs> Probably not, but you know. Uh, but obviously you've got the grip there and you will have your normal shot release button, exposure compensation, ISO and recording button, yeah. video recording button in there. Yeah, exactly. But it does look very interesting. And looking at the second shot, um, we have this photographer, who knows, maybe it's Joe McNally. Um, <laughs> I only know one photographer who works at Elimic Sense, Joe McNally, so <laughs> every picture I see, I try to find Joe in there. Yeah. Um, but this like, shop... Where's Wally, but where is Wally Joe. exactly? Where is or Joe? Waldo, as they say in America. Exactly. What's yeah. Joe is up to? What's Joe up to? But follow his Instagram. Actually, some good photography in there Amazing. from Olympics. Amazing um, photographer in general, but but yes, and also this photographer, whoever it may be, whether it's Joe or someone else, um, has what I presume is a D6. It looks like yeah, D6 with a WT6. I think that might be a D5 with a WT4. That's right, because D6 is WT7, isn't it? Yeah, and also um, there's a couple of other things that make me think that that's a D5, not a D6. So it's his personal camera, not the Loney from Nikon. Potentially, yeah. And when you see that alongside, when you see the Z9 alongside that camera, you can see the Z9 is smaller. And then what do you think? Do you think those are the real pictures? I think that they, I mean, they're definitely real pictures someone's you, you know gotten their iphone 12 and zoomed in and zoomed in and zoomed in to try and get a picture of this but i do i do think that this is as close as we're going to get before we see the final iteration that's true and then since the camera is going to come out soon very soon then you can't really have a dummy camera there you know you you pretty much have to have a almost ready prototype i would say so and i also think that um you know, Nikon wouldn't give press photographers for such a major worldwide event complete dummy cameras. You know what I mean? Like, take this rubbish. <laughs> We're going to give the proper stuff to the paying customers. We just, re, re, you know, rehouse that FC. Just Here threw you go. some stuff in a camera body and away you go. Have fun with it, guys. Like, no, this is the real deal for this is the kind of photography that this camera was made for. Okay, so they don't just 3D print it and just shove the sensor in it. I don't believe so. Okay. Um, well, it does look very good. It does. Um, it's, uh, it just feels nice. If you look at the last one of the last pictures, you can actually see the grip, the built-in grip there. And the grip looks quite protruded. So actually there's plenty of space for your hand to grip onto. Yeah, absolutely. And as you pointed out with the duct taped back screen, it is on this one as well. Oh, no, it's the same camera. It's number two. That's true. So it's probably the same photographer's Could camera. Be. Anyway, that's there with a 180 to 400, which is a lovely lens um, mm -hmm. with the FTZ. So it's definitely a Z camera, whatever it is. There's no doubt about it. Nice. So speaking of Olympics, mm. what camera, what setup would you take with you for 
Tokyo Olympics or for any Olympics in this case. <laughs> Just for any, imagine if it came back to London again. <laughs> exactly. I would say Z, I would take Z9 with everything the latest and uh, that hasn't been out yet. But let's say if we deal with what exists and obviously you don't have access to the latest Nikon Z9 prototype. Yeah. What would you take? ZFC and uh, no, you wouldn't take ZFC. You would take Z50 <laughs> and put 70 to 300 on it. I would actually go with the D6 if I was an Olympics photographer. <laughs> but as I am not, uh, yeah, I might go with a Z50. Why not? and a z62 i mean who's to stop me <laughs> exactly how yeah why want why are we putting everything into some sort of boxes yeah you know why not to say, take a z50 with you <laughs> I like and the z stick 600 mil on top of it i think that would be great then you get a 900 mil you know all the length yeah. you need i'm just thinking you trying to get um <laughs> through the security as a spectator it's like oh uh, yeah it's a z50 look how small the camera so what about the lens oh, don't worry about it just you know, ignore just, that just ignore that look how small is the camera can i <laughs> Oh, I could tell you a funny story about trying to get into a concert with a with a long lens. But yeah. <laughs> tell me, I want to know. So um, I went to go and see Linkin Park mm -hmm. a few years ago, back before Chester Bennington, sadly, um, passed away. Mm -hmm. But when uh, it was it was Christmas time and at the time I was shooting with the Nikon One system. And I actually did. I think I borrowed a Nikon One. I had a V3 three on loan or something mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm. and the body on its own looks like a compact camera so I took the lenses off and I put it in my bag and then mm. I gave my each of my friends my lenses <laughs> and they hid them in their bags <laughs> and then we managed to get and the guy in yeah. security said oh can you take the camera out of the case please and I said yeah sure and I took it out and I was waiting for him to sort of look and see if you could take the lens cap off the front the body cap mm -hmm. off the front and he said oh no that's fine you know some of these small cameras are so good I'm like mm-hmm <laughs> <laughs> that's true check check my friend who has 500 mil in his backpack <laughs> no, i didn't have a 500 mil with me but still managed to get away with it here's some real wisdom from becky yeah. if you want to get into the event <laughs> pay for your friends <laughs> let them take your lenses and bring the camera with you exactly and life hack next time on ted talk <laughs> becky <laughs> I did. I yeah. did manage to get into a few concerts with with DX bodies with long lenses yeah. because people don't necessarily on security know what these cameras are. But these days you can't do that. That's right. And if you're somewhere in Wembley or let's say O2, you may be sitting quite far away. So actually, mm -hmm. it's a good use of a DX camera or Nikon One camera. Uh, it's painful <laughs> for me to say that, but um, was it 2.4 crop? 2.7 2. 2. 2. crop is quite useful for this situation it was actually because i wasn't that close on that one all right well let's come back to olympics yes so back on track so for realsies for yeah. realsies d6 is the way to go but the d5 is is close enough mm -hmm. and so good mm -hmm. that one could just you could you could take a d5 i think yeah if you're photographing let's say um a running event mm. then maybe d6 tracking system would mm. perform a little bit better yeah for this type of things but the rest i think d5 will be comparable isn't it for sure and then in terms of lenses i mean i don't i'm sure that there are situations in which you need a wide angle but my logic would be to go to like a 70 to 200 mm -hmm. i mean looking at those pictures there of the z9 users they were using 180 to 400 and what looked mm -hmm. like it might have been so depending on discipline you shoot right so yeah. if you somewhere let's say if you for ref in the volleyball then you're pretty much close to the court but mm. if you are somewhere on the stadium let's say and um for in the dressage mm -hmm. as usual so it's our favorite as discipline isn't it yeah. so then you may want to get a longer lens yeah potentially i can tell you that 120 to 300 mm -hmm. i personally i'm so fond of this lens so uh, spoiled now absolutely it's only ten thousand pounds so you know Got cheap taste. <laughs> Absolutely. Crate is cheap nowadays, isn't it? So yeah. <laughs> you just take it and never pay it back. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, no, this is not financial advice. Definitely not. <laughs> um, now, Tom Hogan actually had lists mm -hmm. of what he thought one would take. Mm -hmm. He agreed with the D5 and D6 bodies mm -hmm. and the 70 to 200, a 400 mil 2.8. And a 105, 1.4, and a 300 f4. Nice. I think, you know, event photography and me saying, yes, 105, 1.4e. You have a second body just in case. Just for that. And then when Usain Bolt comes in and wants to try your camera, you've got a second one. Remember that, <laughs> That's that thing right. when he got some Nikon camera and took a picture of actual photographer. That's right. But then you have a second one with 105, and boom, 1.4, shallow depths of field. Mm. No one else in the background. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, that's the money shot right that's there. That's the money shot right there. Um, and then in terms of Z system, he went for Z62, 
mm-hmm. uh, with 1424, 2470, 7200, and the FTZ adapter. To put all those lenses on. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't need to put all those lenses, all the earlier lenses. I yeah. like this setup, and I'm, I agree with the Z6 II. What about you? I agree as well. I think uh, the idea there is you have your main body, let's say, as your main camera that you shoot most of the things in and then you can have a z6 mm-hmm. for something else i mean I, again for if, you, for if you're talking about let's say 100 meters mm-hmm. run then um, you know you're probably not going to use that six for this but then it will deal with everything else sure you know so in terms of this yes you can use that you can have two different lenses on two bodies and in terms of yeah i think uh, they're capable enough not maybe for the fastest of the disciplines mm-hmm. but for most of the things they should be good enough and the tracking is pretty good yeah exactly so we've discussed a Z9, mm-hmm. which will be coming soon, and we think it will come earlier than November, but who knows. Let's talk about the future and what we think Nikon is going to release, as well as uh, read Tom's comments, because he got some idea what's coming, and he shared it with the public. Lucky him. Absolutely. So we're, <laughs> so we're going to go through his notes okay, and agree or disagree with it. <laughs> As the case may be. Uh, So apparently Nikon have gotten very active again in sensor development. This is quite interesting. Yeah, first time since D2H. So D2H was the last camera that had Nikon sensor in it. Yes. So as years ago. Exactly. And they didn't close the sensor division. No, it was just hiding the shadows. (laughs) I see, like a ninja. Absolutely. A shadow cabinet of Nikon. Yeah. And... uh, Apparently, Tom still believes that the Z9 sensor, still going to be a Nikon sensor or part of the Nikon sensor division's product, but it will be produced by Tower Semiconductor. So, Not Sony. Not Sony. Which is, I personally think, is a good thing. Yeah, I agree. I personally think that uh, Sony has quite a monopoly on um, the sensor production. Yeah. And while obviously they're separate divisions from Sony camera manufacturers, it's always good to have different options available to you. So yes. having Tower Semiconductor producing the sensors that are designed by Nikon, mm. I think is going to be quite good. And that may separate the new Z9 from a one camera that uh, that Sony has. Yes, very good point. Um, we also saw the first stacked sensor being developed for industrial That's use. That's true. This one inch, which is really good in low light. Who knows what technology from that sensor mm. is going to come in into Z9 sensor already implemented? Yeah. It's yeah. quite interesting. It is. And then Tom expects that the Z9 is actually will be a 45 megapixel camera. Now, when he says 45 megapixel camera, it doesn't mean this is the same um, Sony sensor that is on Z7. No. It is the one that is produced uh, by um, Tower Semiconductor, Sony, Sony Semiconductor. Um, <laughs> so the reason why he thinks it's 45 megapixel, because obviously we, we need a fast readout. So it's rumored that... Camera will produce 30 frames per second. And you need to have 30 frames per second if you're aiming at 8, 8K. Mm. So 8K at 30 frames per second means you can shoot 30 frames per second stills mm-hmm. at the same resolution. That's where 45 megapixel come in. We hope that it's not just that. Because 45 megapixel was effective with just that nine replace a D6. Yeah. So a low res. We talk 45 is a high res, but with current cameras out that push in 100 megapixel sensors... It's low res in it's comparison. Low, uh, yes, exactly, in comparison. So we, we're talking about the future. We're talking about next, let's say, three to four years. So our hope that it will be slightly more than this. The reason for that being is there's no information on, on Z8 at all. No. And that's the thing. So I don't think that it exists or is going to exist, if well, I'm honest. That is my theory. That is my theory. Is Nikon just replacing D6 with Z9 or it also replacing d850 with that mm. <laughs> Weird i say nothing but that's my that's my feeling my feeling is that the z9 is going to be the answer to multiple let's say photographic problems or multiple photographer needs yes because obviously the d6 and the d850 are two very different yeah. cameras so is the z9 the one camera to rule them all the one camera to bind them that's the thing and then also obviously in the past nikon like pairs yeah, so we mm-hmm. had D6, D850, we yeah. had D3, D700, 
G5, G10. Z6, Z7. Exactly. Mm. So they, they like them in pairs. And normally they design by two different teams, uh, teams but they do work in parallel. Yes. So a lot of those technologies trickle down into each, each of the cameras. Mm -hmm. Now, in this case, I wonder if Nikon thinks that we want just to have a one flagship out. So we don't want another one to cannibalize the sales. Yeah, and to kind of muddy the waters a bit. Exactly. Yeah, I think that that, although that may mean that we could have some features potentially fall short of a Z8 if there were one, mm -hmm. um, I think for the most part, the Z9 could solve the problem. Yes, and I think that Z9 probably will be out for a good two years mm. before we actually start to hear about Z8. For sure. If it follows our logic where they're going to use slightly higher resolution body. Yeah. Anyway, we watch the space on that one. All right. So next up, we have that bodies are still being debated. Um, it, it, Tom said, is this Tom that said clues abound? Yes, yes it's in that. italics. Okay. So Just check. Do you like my formatting? Yeah. <laughs> so, I get better. So clear. Um, clues abound that the ZFC was a quick decision to push to manufacturing. What Tom doesn't know is what data. What data? Data or debate <laughs> drove that quick turn. Um he says he heard about a Z52 being worked on and the ZFC has exactly Z52 specs um, or the specs that he mm -hmm. heard. So did the Z52 turn into the ZFC and will there be a Z52 now? Uh, the only for sure cameras to come are the Z30 and the Z9 and even the Z30 isn't a near term for sure due to part shortages. Yeah, it looks like Z30 is ready on paper and mm. ready to be manufactured, but you need to have a certain supply to produce at least the first batch. Yeah. So obviously we talk about supply shortage, yada, yada, yada. This kind of, this topic goes through all our podcasts. Mm. One question I want to ask our um, listeners and uh, viewers is to, well, some of you say that, oh, it's better they wouldn't announce things because they announce things and they don't release them. Well, would you like that person? Would you like uh, the companies to announce things when they're ready to be shipped? And mm. that means it could take another year. Mm. And then you complain that <laughs> Nikon is not releasing anything. Yeah. And that's actually, because we're a Nikon Cedric podcast, everyone does exactly the same. You look at A1, check today, you can't get A1 in a shop no. anywhere. No. So PlayStation 5 is not available anywhere still. And that's six months in production. No, that's more than six months in production. It's way more. Exactly. So... The camera is released, but you can't get it. No. I'm talking A1, not PS5. Oh, but, I, was, uh, <laughs> I was talking about the PS5. <laughs> but um, the same, GFX 100, you can't buy it uh, as, um, anywhere right unless, now. Unless. If you want to, you still need to wait. So would you like them to have plenty of stock and then announce the camera, and then you complain that they don't announce anything, or you would like this to happen this way? I personally think the middle ground would be nice. Yes. So at least have some sort of good, you know, quantities, Balance. exactly. But what Tom says as well, that a lot of companies now can't really predict how successful the product will be. Mm. Because looking at Nikon, two months ago, Nikon was all doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. And then ZFC comes out, not the top of, prof of the range professional camera, not Z9, a nice retro camera that is effectively a very close to Z50 specs. And now... It's all unicorns and rainbows. It is. Um, it is actually amazing that Nikon often say, we don't know, or we didn't expect this product to be as popular as mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. um, the fact is that people love new stuff. Generally, as photographers, we love new stuff. That's so true. I think that there should be a middle ground. Maybe instead of releasing a product months before it's going to come to to production mm -hmm. it would be nice if it was a little bit of a shorter time but saying that nikon have generally tried to do that their main issue has been that the initial batches are small quantities they sold out pretty much straight away yeah as is the case right, with right. the zfc the with the macros with pretty much everything that we've had z62 z72s even those are not readily available at the that's moment. true and in the, in the last five years you're right they were announcing the product about maybe four to six weeks before the release date yeah the they, most. before they used to do three months four months yeah. in advance now they say here's the announcement place your order pick it up next month yeah exactly so i think that they have found quite a good sort of happy medium but obviously there's always going to be people who are unhappy that's true <laughs> unfortunately that is the way of the world now something that tom also mentioned was that everything 
in between Z30, Z9, uh, other cameras is still being heatedly debated in Tokyo as to how it forms the full body lineup. Nikon has tinkered with creating a Z90, but is not yet committed that he knows of. And the Mark III update cycle is still enough away that some of the Z9 decisions are likely to spill mm. over. So that's very, it's a very interesting take. I'm glad they're talking about Z90. Yeah, I think that the DX lineup does need to be expanded for sure. Yeah, add some lenses to it as well. Yeah, throw some lenses in there. Um, he did say, however, Z30, not only was this camera prototype, but it went to certification worldwide. That's true. We saw that. We reported on that. Mm, as best I can tell, it's basically a Z50 without an EVF and is targeted as the entry Z camera, launch imminent, dependent upon parts. Here we go. Any minute now. Yeah, quite literally. It's, it, it really is just down to the parts now that we'd be waiting for. And I, for one, would be happy to see a Z30 on the yeah, market. Absolutely. And then, yeah, we had uh, no Z8 mentioned at all. Not a sausage. Exactly. Not a sausage roll, even. <laughs> so, ZF. ZF. Okay, so this is um, a rumoured full frame retro style camera. So the thought is that the ZFC does well, Nikon see a demand for the uh, for the retro style camera, and then they make a, let's say 24 megapixel retro style. I mean, I'd like it to be more, but. Yeah, they'll you know. take a Z6 Mark II, strip it down, put a, put a retro stuff on top of it. Yeah. All those beautiful metal casings. I love it. Um, now, Tom Hogan doesn't actually like the retro design. He doesn't think that um, it is successful and thinks that it will just eventually vanish. That's fine. I, it, everyone can have their own opinion. And you yeah. know, on this one, we I personally don't agree because I think Me neither. you can have a fun camera. Yeah. It doesn't need to be, let's say, a current design and its functionality, etc. Yes, you can have a, a just a nice little camera that you you know you have fun with and you enjoy using. Exactly. I think it's more down to the pleasurable user experience than the specs in this case. Um like the DF for example, actually the DF as a performer was a fantastic camera, but the autofocus was not very good and obviously it didn't have video. It wasn't that kind mm -hmm. of a camera. It was designed for a pleasurable shooting experience and to kind of take your time with and to be very tactile. And that's one thing that the ZFC has, something that Fuji did with all of their yeah. XT series Let cameras. Let me tell you my story. <laughs> yes. Uh, back in the day when Fuji X-Pro1 came out, yeah. I loved the design so much mm. that while I was in Japan at the time, I bought it there before it was even released in UK. I remember that, yeah. The autofocus on that camera was God awful. <laughs> it was just awful. You literally would have every third shot out of focus. The right. usability and the functionality, the menu system was awful. Mm. And they improved the camera quite a bit yeah. throughout the release. And obviously nowadays with X-Pro3 and X-T4 out, and they have fantastic autofocus system, and it's quite improved. But what I can tell you, the user experience was awful. But I love this camera two bits. It was the camera that I would take with me on a day-to-day basis. Mm. And I, I, I took, you know, quite good shots, you know, like I won't say my best shots at the time, but at the time they were fantastic shots that I wouldn't be able to take with one of the big, let's say, Nikon cameras. Et cetera, Interesting. Et cetera. So the, those cameras, they have place, in my opinion. Yeah. They're not necessarily, as you say, like, I don't want to put things again into boxes, and no. pray, you know, uh, but yes, I wouldn't use ZFC for commercial work. That's me. You could be different, yeah. you know, but... I would enjoy to take this camera with me on a, just a stroll around London. And, uh, you know, 28 mil is fantastic. 42 focal distance, beautiful. I yep. actually enjoy this focal distance now more than 35, more than 50. Yeah. I don't know why, but it just hits the right spot of being not too wide yeah. and not too tight compared to 50. Absolutely. So if you enjoy using the camera, it doesn't matter if it's, let's say, not the top performer. Whatever you use, it doesn't matter because... At the end of the day, you will be judged by the pictures that you take and not the equipment that you own. Exactly. There is also the mention that the ZF would need a full AIS indexing uh, ability on mm -hmm. and Mark II FTZ and that that would allow people to kind of dig out the old manual focus lenses out of the closet. I use the FTZ with my manual focus lenses quite happily. I've mm -hmm. also got the now the Megadap adapter. That's true. Uh, which is very slow. Autofocus is pointless on that thing. But anyway. Yeah, I think the only problem with the pre-eye glass on the Z, uh, on Z, uh, Z, uh, T, FTZ um, is that you actually, you need to open it up to focus and then you need to close it down um, manually to shoot so it's not automatically stopping them down but I personally think that yes if you, you can 
does release that f, we will be a little bit more demanding and critical with that camera. It shouldn't be just a fun camera. It also should have all those things like AI indexing, you know, yeah. those features that Nikon DF had. Why not? So we will ask definitely tougher questions on this one. Yeah, for sure. But looking at the size of Z6 and, Z, uh, and Z7, the camera should be fairly small, wasn't it? Physically. Physically. Physically small, yes. One point I, I wanted to make is, well, if ZF becomes an entry-level camera yes. into Z full-frame system, will it make Z5 redundant? Z5 is such a difficult camera for us. Not yeah. for other markets. Yeah. In the US, it's been tremendously popular. Yeah. And I think it definitely, that's partly down to the price point. In the US, it's a much more competitive price. In the UK, it's been a tough camera for us to kind of find a place for, let's say, because the Z6 is close enough. Yada, yada. We've talked, we've talked about this many, many times. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I think that potentially... It could make the Z5 redundant. It depends on the price point. And that's always what it depends on, doesn't it? That's true. And coming back to this is Z5 Mark II mm. potential release. Z5 already has a lot of technology of Z6 Mark II and Z7 Mark II. It does. So what would it have? I don't think it would have Z9 technology. That's probably reserved for Mark III versions of Z6 and Z7. Yeah. So would you release a Mark II version or would you just release ZF and keep Z5 in production for some time? I The the second option. I'm with you. Option okay. two. Um, so next up we have the Z50 Mark II. There are a few things that basically come from the ZFC, which we would expect to see in a Z50 Mark II if there is going to be one, um, like the USB power, better autofocus, the fully articulating LCD screen, uh, the extended shutter speed capability, and other little odds mm -hmm. and ends now uh, what tom says is that the z52 actually needs sensor-based vr as well yeah, and i personally agree with it look at this this way before mm -hmm. fuji cameras didn't have vr on them mm -hmm. then fuji made it happen right uh you look at uh, fuji um, medium format mm -hmm. they didn't have um you know the vr unit on the bigger sensor and yes. now they have yes so i personally think that it's a matter of time Progress. For, exactly. <laughs> for Nikon to advance the technology that much that they can design a VR unit that is small enough to fit Z50. And Z50 is a tiny camera. Yeah. So this is the one of the options they need to have, but also it needs a higher resolution sensor, in my opinion. On a DX sensor? Yes. Okay. I think 20 megapixels, it's good, but it's a little bit on the edge of being small at the moment. So I think that the new generation of sensor maybe with a high resolution and similar levels of low light because low light on Z50 is very good. Mm. Uh, but yeah, high res with the same low light capabilities or even better, who knows, maybe they're going to develop a stack sensor, would be a nice addition. Fair enough. The Z6 Mark III is obviously something that's been in the pipeline or rumored. I mean, it's inevitable that they will make a Mark III version. They've made a Mark II version mm -hmm. at some point, probably early 2023. Yeah. Um, now, because it's a popular camera, it that's what kind of guarantees its update. That's what that's I true. Think. And if Z9 comes out at the end of this year, mm. Nikon will give it a year before releasing Z6 Mark Mark III. And the reason why I say this is because I think there will be a lot of technology, Z9 technology, that will trickle down to Z6 and Z7 cameras. I also think that there will be other manufacturers, for example, Sony, Canon, etc. This is kind of like the go-to camera for so many people that middle of the road full frame body yeah um there is a very much a prosumer body that there'll be so much other technology out there new features and things like that that nikon do need to kind of not get too excited about putting forward something until we've seen what everybody else does do you know what i mean absolutely absolutely do you think they will keep the same 24 megapixel sensor or do you think they'll bump it up a little bit maybe to 30 36 megapixels i think with new processors you could get away with higher resolution and still maintain the low light capability um mm -hmm. the main struggle obviously with the z7 uh, mark ii and potentially at mark three is the amount of resolution then kind of creates complications when it comes to better AF and low light performance. So that would need to be. That's the thing. So obviously we all get those focus, mm. but the sensor uh, resolution will dictate on if they ever need of 8K at 30 frames as well. Sure. So yeah. if that becomes a standard, let's say at the end of next year, or beginning of the 2023, then 
Z6 mm-hmm. will, will have a high resolution sensor. Yeah. And that begs the question, what the 7 Mark III will be then? So we've talked about this before. The Z7 Mark III will either eventually become a Z8 if mm-hmm. they do one. Or they might not, and they'll just stick with the Z7 and make it a Mark III. And then it maybe that will have billions of uh, megapixels. Lots. <laughs> and that's the problem. Okay, if Z6 resolution sensor stays the same, yeah, we shoot 4K, we don't push to 8K, mm-hmm. then Z7 Mark III has its own place. If Z6 Mark III is now, let's say, 45 megapixels to have 8K on it, mm. Z7 has to be higher. The Z7 has to be like something around 60 megapixels at least. Yeah. You see, just to, just to be there. Yeah. And then that's the question. Now you're starting to push that territory. And then you think, well, if the AF is going, system is going to come from Z9 as well, then where Z8 will be at this point? One Would would we have, let's say, one at 60 megapixels and one at 100 megapixels? Or would they just say, well, actually, we're not going to release that 8. We're going to maybe rebudge that eight, that 7 Mark III into a bigger body, mm. give it a higher resolution, and charge the same 4,000 pounds that they used to. Maybe. I don't think at the moment that there's going to be a Z8 if at all. I haven't heard anything official. At, nope. Not even, oops, not even sort of semi-official. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not even a whisper. Not even a whisper. So I don't know. Who are your contact that you can tell me? <laughs> I just wonder. I just wonder if it's it's just the internet made it up, made up a camera and threw it out there. Well, that's the thing. And that's where we start to think of Nikon lineup and how it's evolved into different things. Because I think about six months ago, we would have completely different lineup of Nikon or future Nikon camera that we would have now. Yeah. Because now if you have, let's say, ZF released, then where Z5 goes? If Z7 Mark III has a very high resolution sensor, where Z8 goes mm. as well? And will they want to release it early enough as well? So it looks like something like Z6 Mark III and Z7 Mark III would be released at the earliest at the end of next year, but probably even the first quarter of 2023. Right. Speaking of future releases, let's talk about lenses. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we've seen a couple of patent applications for uh, Nikon lenses, one being a 400mm f4 and the other being a 24 to 105 f4. Uh, so we not also published patents for 28 1.8 lens, which in design looks very similar to 24 1.8 mm. design. And then they also had a 24 to 200 lens, but the design of the lens, according to the picture that they provide, is completely different from the current Z24 to 200. Suspicious. Is there another one in the pipeline, or they just had different designs that, and then they desi- they decided which one to choose at the end? I don't know. It is it's a slightly bizarre one because we've got that, then we've also got an F mount E type large diameter 70 to 200, mm-hmm. which makes no sense to me that's true i think <laughs> nikon just had an info dump they patented everything that they have yeah everything written on the piece of napkin you yeah. know <laughs> they're like you let's just know. send those exactly. let's apply for those and by doing this they confused all the rumors websites but the one important thing is it looks like that nikon is designing the lenses for Z system mm-hmm. completely from scratch not just reusing the old F designs and adapting it to a Z mount, which a lot of third-party companies like Seven Artisans and TT Artisans, all the artisans in the world do, um, but they actually design a completely new lens from ground up, which means they should provide much better image quality as well. Yes, here's hoping. We will obviously keep you updated when we have more news on those. Uh, and with the patents, you never know. Some of them will eventually come into fruition, but it could take years as well. Yeah, others could just end up in the rubbish bin. Next one up. ZFC and its release schedule confusion. Yes, there was massive confusion there. There Originally, Nikon in Japan released a notice of apology, I believe, saying that the ZFC will be delayed in the 28mm special edition kit variant. Google Translate said postponed. Yeah. Which effectively means that they're not releasing that particular kit, the 28 special edition kit with ZFC camera, 
on 28th of July. Yes. However, we did receive a very small batch of these. Those of you who ordered from us that were in the first couple, I would say less than a handful, will have received yours. Obviously, we had a lot more people that wanted them from the first batch and we wished that we'd received enough to fulfill every order. But I would be interested to know for those of our listeners and viewers in other regions, if you did pre-order a ZFC 28 mil kit, did yours arrive? Because there's still a little bit of confusion as to whether or not those actually went out the door. Absolutely. So they were released. They actually made it to UK. Yeah. Didn't get stuck in the canal. No. The canal. The camel. The canal. canal. Didn't get stuck on a camel. <laughs> in a canal. Um, yeah. I can't imagine Nick and Rap carrying <laughs> all those five ZFC boxes on a camel <laughs> through the desert. <laughs> That's right. I don't know why they'd have to go through a desert, but anyway. Um, you could just fly these days, but, you yeah. know, we're yeah, a little yeah. bit old-fashioned, aren't we? Yeah. Um, but they're coming. They, they are available. It just comes down to, I guess, that the future shipments will be quite slow. I believe so. Um, now, if you are still interested in getting a hold of a ZFC, we will be running a back order list for quite some time, I imagine, until stock becomes more freely available. So if you are interested, just let us know or put in your prepaid order. We still have some to fulfill. And obviously we will just send yours out as soon as we can. Right. Next up, Lee Filters is expected to announce a new filter system adapter for the Z1424 F2.8 S lens. On today. The, on, yes, on today. So when you see it a couple of days later, they definitely announced this. So it's a new field holder for 1424 lenses. So Yay. Lee Filter joins the bunch of other manufacturers that produce a field holder for 1424 lens. Excellent. Uh, speaking of 1424 2.8 S lens, we have a review from our review section. Um, this is by Daniel J. Stein, and he said the new 1424 2.8 for astrophotography. Is this the ultimate nightscape lens? Is it, Becky? I don't know. Oh, actually, I haven't read his review. <laughs> he likes it. He says it's an improvement over the F mount version, and he likes the versatility of zoom over, let's say, prime lens like 20 mil. While he um, rates 20 mil 1.8 quite highly, he thinks that for his work, he prefers a zoom. Our recommendation is if you are considering this lens, do have a look at that. You also can have a look at 14 to 30 f4 and 20 mil f1.8 for our uh, for us prime users is right there as well yeah absolutely um and for your weekend read and watch section we have an article which actually was posted on nick on rumors was it it was and then uh, we found the further info on uh, chap's website who actually wrote that uh, nico van dyke yeah. yeah so this is on the nicorex f camera with m42 mount the article which is from nico van dyke.net uh, and this is actually a great resource for all old school Nikon info. He actually writes about loads of different models. So well worth having a read if you like that sort of thing. It's the tab in my browser that I have open all the time. It's a really interesting, actually. So, so um, the Nikorex, we've actually got a Nikorex downstairs, I believe, in the cabinet. We have several. Not for sale, <laughs> but, uh, but they are down there. Uh, it says, in March 1960, the Nikorex 35 camera was introduced. Uh, it was made by Mamiya. Hmm. Apparently. I know this brand. Yeah. Very and, well. Yes, you do. Um, now, the one that we're referring to, rather rare version with an M42 thread mount. A little bit further down in that same article, he shows a picture of a rather rare version of the Nikkor XF with an M42 thread mount. There it is. Fantastic. Um, so you can effectively put M42 lenses on it. You can, I suppose, and then shoot 35mm film. What Would do you, you do? call yourself Nikon user or Nikorex user? <laughs> Nikorex Mamiya slash, I don't know. <laughs> Fantastic. Very confusing. Great. The next one up is a little bit more modern. It's a video for people who can't read, like <laughs> me. Uh, it's called Macro Photography with Nikon Z MC 105, BTS, Best Light, Tripod with Handheld Photography by Morton Hillmo YT Channel. I still call it YT. That's great. Why not? We have a podcast recommendation for you this week. It's called Photographic Memory with Jonathan Daniel Price. Uh, he talks to photographers about their work in general. There's a wide range of uh, topics covered, including a photographer who shot Boy George in Ibiza in the Ibiza. 1980s. In Ibiza in the 1980s. Um, all the way to very different North Korean defectors. And he talks about what goes into their projects, past gear, 
their interests. So well worth exactly. listening. Exactly. I think sometimes we just get too fixated on the gears and specifications and numbers. Mm. I think less about the pictures we take. So this is a really nice one. Go pour yourself a nice cup of tea and, and have, enjoy the listen. Have a listen, exactly. Um, you can also have a look on the Olympic side of things again at the best photographs from the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, if you follow The Guardian, they publish photos they, shot, they publish the best shots of the Absolutely. day. Absolutely. As ours British, we always recommend The Guardian. <laughs> Sorry. And then LA Times does the same as well as CNN. So you can have a look at the links. We'll pop those in the description box and in the podcast notes for you. Yeah, they generally publish the articles every day with the best photographs. And then at the end, they normally do a combination of the best from the all Olympics combined. Love that. Uh, then we have an article for you. Best Big Lens for a Wildlife Safari by Piper Mackay Photography. Is Mackay or McKay? It depends, actually. It's very individual, but I would, I mean, it could be McKay. Okay. Well, one thing he says is, whatever lens you choose, get the longer focal distance. <laughs> when, it, when in doubt, go longer. Exactly. You get 800 mil, buy 1,000. You got 1,000, got 2,000. <laughs> Nice. Uh, now, you can also watch two-time Pulitzer Prize winner and Nikon Z7 user Estras M. Suarez discussing what makes a great photo at Photo Shelter. Uh, this does require free registration, but in this virtual portfolio review, Estras discusses the key elements of composition, what needs adjustment, and why it's important to give yourself the assignment you want somebody else to give you. Again, less gear, more, more photography. photography. The DP review completed publishing their articles on Absolute Beginner's Guide to Film Photography. All 10 parts are now available. So if you never touch film in your life, then go read that. Go Absolutely. rekindle yourself. Yeah, I think that um, every photographer should try and shoot film at some point or another. I know we do get people who go, why are you shooting film? Digital is so much easier, cheaper, better, blah, blah, blah. But I think everyone should challenge themselves at least once to shoot a good role of film. Absolutely. I think we all should be okay what other people enjoy. Into. Exactly. I shot just film on my holiday. I shot the sheriff. <laughs> but he did not shoot the deputy. <laughs> like, was I so 400? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week. We leave you with this wonderful shot of Tom Daly doing his knitting. You cannot get much more British than that. We love Tom Daly. Absolutely. One thing we forgot in our equipment list, a nice yarn and the... <laughs> knitting needles? Knitting needles. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you very much for watching and or listening. Please do give us a like and a subscribe if you're on YouTube. Um, how about a follow and maybe even a review on a podcast platform if that's where you're enjoying this podcast. We will see you next week. Yeah, go join us on Instagram. Yes, I'm at Rebecca underscore Danese. And I'm at ConstantKochkin.co.uk. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bong. Bong.